So this is today. Today is yesterday and tomorrow is also today. You traveled through time to the present. Yes. Yeah, I don't think you get how time travel works. It's like we're stuck. You know, like a like a needle on a scratch record. I wake up every day right here, right in Punxsutawney, and it's always February 2nd. It's one of those infinite time loop situations you might have heard about. It's a thing where the same day keeps happening. Time. in a damn time loop or something? Ah! Groundhog Day Project blog. What is this order? Where are we? This is day... This is jumping backwards. So this is day 287? Is that right? Yeah. Day 287, dated 16th May 2014. Jim Beam, Ice, Water. Sexism. Noun. Unfair treatment of people because of their sex, especially unfair treatment of women. Full definition. 1. Prejudice or discrimination based on sex, especially discrimination against women. 2. Behavior conditions or attitudes that foster stereotypes of social roles based on sex. Sexist. Adjective or noun. Origin. Sexism, as in racism. First use. 1968. Misogyny. Noun. A hatred of women. Misogynic. Misogynist. Misogynistic. Origin. Greek. Misogynia. From misayin to hate and gyna. Woman. First use. Circa 1656. Today, a simple listen. I want to find the lines and situations in the film that imply one of the above, sexism or misogyny. An obvious one to start. Phil's calling Nan hairdo, i.e. identifying her by a physical attribute that generally indicates gender. Reducing her synecdically like that, Phil dismisses her actual personality and uniqueness, reducing her power and increasing his. I wonder if I should include a line like Larry's, that would be the home shopping network. I figure one could make the argument, obviously, that HSN is a lesser basic cable network worthy of scorn by the likes of Phil, but also one can make the argument that since HSN's audience is more female than male, Park, Lim, Bardwaj, and Kim 2010 found that the audience of various shopping channels was 62.7% female, Larry's put-down could be considered gendered, suggesting a feminine focus as lesser than a masculine or more equal-gendered audience would be. Rita's introduction, visually, playful against the same blue background where Phil was just working, suggests a lighter but not necessarily a lesser role. The song Weatherman is specifically gendered, a male singer presumably representing Phil, offering to warm up his beloved, presumably representing Rita, thus letting us know up front that this is a romantic comedy. Rita sits in the back, Larry drives, Phil rides up front beside Larry. Could they not manage a three-person front row a la Scooby-Doo? Phil's mimicking of Rita in the van is, oddly enough, not really gendered. She's just another little person, regardless of gender, for him to mock. It's almost equalizing. Almost. Really, really close. Larry refers to picky talent, like Phil, as prima donnas. Certainly a gendered term, suggesting that only female stars can be demanding, generally, and here suggesting that Phil is acting like a woman in being demanding. Would you help me with my pelvic tilt? An aggressive come on, specifically offensive to this woman he has only just met but not really gendered. I slept alone, Mrs. Lancaster. Is it sexist? Phil so readily making suggestive comments. Or would he make the same comment if it were Mr. Lancaster, who asked him if he slept well? I've seen more than one source that quoted Harold Ramis as saying that comedy happens in the two-shot. That is, a shot that includes two people interacting. So I am hesitant to suggest that Phil's positioning with Mrs. Lancaster is deliberately aggressive or antagonistic. After his brief mock weather report, he steps up very close to her, effectively standing over her because she is significantly shorter than he is, or just the easiest way to frame that shot because of the proximity of the flowers on the left and that buffet on the right. It comes across a little domineering, 
a tiny little power move that adds to Phil's mockery with the espresso or cappuccino line to diminish Mrs. Lancaster and raise up Phil. It might not be specifically gendered, though, rather just Phil's approach to anyone he feels he is better than, which is just about everybody. Ned's fur collar, high voice, and bossy approach to conversation, not to mention that feather on his hat, or the way he clings to his briefcase like a woman's purse, seem almost deliberately effeminate. Did you sleep okay without me? You tossed and turned, didn't you? Phil's come on suggests, of course, that Rita couldn't possibly sleep without Phil, without a man to comfort her. Yet I doubt Phil would care to do any comforting. He seems like the kind of guy who would sneak out after sex rather than stick around for anything like cuddling. I can't decide if Rita's isn't he cute regarding the groundhog is suggestive of something weak. A woman finding the furry animal cute or simply suggestive of Rita being able to see the Punxsutawney Phil is quite cute, that she can appreciate such details that Phil would never admit to. But then the reason he wouldn't admit to thinking such a thing would be because it isn't manly, isn't it? Territorial battle over the horn in the van. Larry's nobody honks this horn but me, okay, pal? Masculinity at its warrior best, fighting over insignificant things. Phil calls the trooper on the commander... The trooper on the commander? Phil calls the trooper on the highway commander, suggestive of dominance, though technically a woman could be a commander as well. Is your troop going to be selling cookies again this year? Phil suggests Larry's sweater makes him look like a Girl Scout. Looking like a Girl Scout is obviously supposed to be insulting. Yo, Mama. Phil just can't be bothered to call people by their actual names. I believe I've compared that tendency to Sawyer from Lost before. Exercising a small bit of power over someone by A, labeling someone they might not want. Labeling someone they might not want to be called. What? Labeling someone something they might not want to be called. Weird typo. B, not even bothering to remember their actual name in the first place because you look down on them. He reduces Mrs. Lancaster to Mama. It would be endearing if he weren't using it to get her attention to make demands of her. He does know her name. He calls her Mrs. Lancaster the very next morning. Phil reduces just about anyone by relabeling. The guy on the phone who Phil is asking about phone lines, he calls him Sport. It isn't used in a sexist way, though the immediate association between Sport and a young boy is sexist, but still reductionist. This guy cannot help Phil, so he is effectively a kid, powerless. Phil also calls the DJs boys. He will reduce anyone. He is not a nice guy. For the record, I am not considering Doris's use of Hun as anything but endearing and friendly. She uses it for both Rita and Phil, so there's nothing particularly sexist there. Take it like a man. Sure, this is perhaps an example of a line that critiques sexism, as it falls into Phil's categorical list of the usual rules society tells us to live by, which he will not much later say he won't be living by anymore, but it is still worth mentioning here. Phil kissing Mrs. Lancaster. Exemplary of Phil's new status. He was already a white male in America, presumably upper middle or lower upper class. He was not exactly powerless. Now he has even more freedom to do absolutely whatever he wants. Recall my interpretation of the Bronco scene. Phil represents an ideal sort of masculinity. Twisted and inappropriate as that ideal may be. And here he is taking advantage of his white male privilege with the newly added bonus time loop privilege. It's weird that Phil's next use of that privilege, his interactions with Nancy Taylor, are not driven by anything particularly sexist. This is a situation I once referred to as time loop date rape, and it's not sexist, though it is certainly shallow. Phil's proposition to Nancy, though, that could be taken as a simplistic reification of normal gender roles and expectations to appease Nancy's appropriate paranoia at Phil calling her Rita. Fix your bra, honey. Maybe I spoke too soon with that parenthetical above regarding Doris. Phil approximates her own term of endearment here, and combined with the bra bit, it seems to be maybe at least a little sexist. That Phil can time Doris's movements by something only a woman would be doing, adjusting her bra. Of course, this comes right after his line, exit Felix and stand up with a not-so-bright look on your face. Phil is still reducing everyone to labels and insults. In addition to Phil's representation of masculinity, Day 69, I Don't Even Have to Floss, deals with Lorraine's French maid costume as well, certainly an example of sexist imagery. 
Phil then reduces Lorraine, not with his sexist terminology, but by implying she is a child when he orders the tickets. That Rita is so stereotypically feminine in what she wants out of life and out of her perfect guy, is that sexist, quaint, or both? Phil's line, this is a man we're talking about, right? That definitely pushes this conversation into sexism territory. He's kind, sensitive, gentle. He's not afraid to cry in front of me. That's what set him off. What Rita wants is not stereotypically masculine. Drink scene. Note the banner on the wall. Punxsutawney has a Groundhog Day beauty queen. She's visible on stage at Gobbler's Knob. Actually, no. That is Miss Groundhog Day and the Groundhog Day King. The female's title is diminutive. The male's augmentive. And the entire drink scene is a little sexist when you compare it to Danny Rubin's original script. In the original, the scene belongs to Tess, not Rita. Phil orders white wine, the feminine drink. Tess orders whiskey, the masculine drink. Now, since Rita is supposed to be so finely feminine, her drink of choice is sweet vermouth on the rocks with a twist. While Phil's order, the manly Jim Beam. It's even got a man's name. And this is the second time Phil has offered to, and proceeded to, buy Rita something. This time a drink, before coffee and a donut, in order to get time with her. Even Phil's French is sexist. He refers to la fille que j'aimera, the girl who I will love. Fee is not an adult woman. Related to Phil's positioning himself close to Mrs. Lancaster, when Phil gets Rita into his room and she walks over to the side where the bed is, he deliberately stays close and even gets in her way, so it is difficult to get back to the other side of the room. And finally, for today, I have suggested before that Phil's offer, I will read to you, is sexist. Or it's just lazy romanticism. Or both. To be continued. Today's reason to repeat a day forever. To not take advantage of my white male privilege. Except maybe some of the time because, you know, time loop. No consequences and whatnot. But I promise to feel bad about it. I think I have traveled through time. What is wrong in the end which never comes? Or which comes again and again? Lap, lap, laughing. Like waves. Since the Big Bang set everything in motion, everything that happens in this universe has to be the way it is. Man, are you hungry? I haven't eaten since later this afternoon. Particles unfolding the way they're destined to. How do you sleep at night? You've never seen Groundhog Day? Mm. Yeah, you know Groundhog Day is not a documentary.